power project with a dependable capacity of 2,190,000 kilowatts of power. As a result of the destruction in 1956 of the Scholenkopf power plant, the Niagara area is faced with an emergency. You can see where the plant has collapsed into the river. The proposed new power plant was located downstream from the old location. This is an artist's rendition of the structure as it will be. This is a project map of the area. Water flows down the Niagara River over the Canadian and American Falls down the river gorge to the Whirlpool and then out to Lake Ontario. The plan envisions a river intake about three miles above the falls with a system of two conduits to carry the water around the falls under the city of Niagara to a pump storage plant in the town of Lewiston. The pumping and generating plant pumps water into an artificially constructed reservoir, then to the main power plant and finally discharged into the river and then to Lake Ontario. The flow of water at Niagara averages 200,000 cubic feet or 1,500,000 gallons of water each second, falling 314 feet. The Treaty of 1950 between Canada and the United States permits each country to divert all except 100,000 cubic feet per second for power purposes during the tourist season in the daytime and all except 50,000 cubic feet per second at all other times. Electricity is a product that must be used the instant it is generated. It cannot be stored. The incompatible situation of more available water at night when power demand is less could only be resolved by storing the water for daytime use. This is accomplished by using the excess night power to pump the extra diversion to a reservoir 83 feet higher than the intake river level. During the day the pumps are reversed to become generators. The water flows from the reservoir and an additional 240,000 kilowatts of power can be produced. The structure length is 1,840 feet. Its width is 580 feet and its height is 376 feet. There are 13 turbine generators at the pump storage plant and 13 generators at the main plant. The penstocks are 462 feet long with a diameter of 24 feet. This is an artist's rendition of the main power plant that is located on the Niagara. This is an artist's rendition of the pump storage plant that's located in Lewiston and it is joined by the canal and the two power conduits from the river. I worked on this project under the guidance of Mr. Thorgerson. He was the head engineer for Yule Hall and Rich on this project. This is the and it shows the starting of the excavation of the rock. This is another view of the excavation showing how the rock formations were terraced up when the, when the excavation was being done. This is a view of the aerial view of the plant looking at Sir Adam Beck. Sir Adam Beck is across the river on the Canadian side. There you see the power plant and the canal being excavated in the center and down below is the picture of the pump storage plant as it was being excavated out. This is another view of the site showing the vast 
area that had to be worked on all at the same time. The first concrete was poured April 2nd, 1959, and it was 681 days to power. This is a view showing the power plant at the river, showing how the rock was excavated out to take the penstocks that lead from the canal down to the turbines. This is another view from the opposite end showing the turbine bases being built at the time. Another view showing some of the concrete board with the traveling cranes on top and bottom and they had a cement mixing. This is a close-up view showing the rock formation and how it had to be blasted out in order to get the penstocks in. This is a view of the upper part of the dam being constructed now and concrete being poured. Here's the penstocks as they come from the dam itself and they are going to be continued down and encased in concrete. Uh, progress was made all during the night and as you can see they worked around the clock in order to get this job done. And this is a view from the top of the dam showing the intake gates. And these gates uh, can be open and closed and they uh, apply the water into the penstocks. This is the bottom part showing the turbine and generator bay here and it shows how this is a view of the of the canal part where the water enters the penstocks to this is an aerial view of the canal as it was being excavated out that this canal is very deep fairly well poured with the concrete and the cranes on top this is another view showing the penstock steelwork being put in, all set to be covered and poured with concrete.